All right. I think we're live here. Hey, Liam, how you, how's it going, man? Good. How about you? Awesome. I appreciate you you joining me on the podcast here. Uh, before we jump into it, I just want to thank everyone for watching. Uh, if you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, uh, all that fun stuff. Really trying to bring interesting entrepreneurs onto the show, let you get an understanding of what it takes to build a business, uh, and then you know, get everyone connected. I'm trying to build a little community around this Nick Fuller show. Um, so with that, Liam, I'm super pumped to have you on. I'm a Twitter follower of yours. That's how I know you. Uh, I bought one of your courses. I'll talk oh, about wow. that. Um, and just super excited to learn more about your journey and kind of bring it to to my audience here. Yeah, man, for sure. I, I really appreciate you having me. And uh, I'm hopefully I can bring some awareness to the quote unquote sweaty startup area. So, yes, yes. Love that. Uh, cool. Well, Liam, let's assume no one knows who you are, maybe outside of your your uh, Twitter <laughs> handle. Uh, what's your background? Kind of how do you describe yourself to someone you haven't met? Yeah, man, for sure. So I'll keep it somewhat high level, but uh, born and raised Canadian, uh, 26 years old. So just a small town in Canada, right outside Vancouver, British Columbia. Nothing crazy. I uh, grew up playing lacrosse and hockey. I quickly realized I wasn't going to the NHL, so I quit hockey right away. Um, and then I and continued to play lacrosse. And then I went over and actually did uh, four years of undergraduate in North Carolina. Wasn't okay. Chapel Hill. I wasn't that good or nor was I that smart. So I'll, I'll just admit that right now. Um, but I went to a smaller private school. Um, it was a Division II NCAA. Did four years of business management there. Uh, it was one of those things where I just was like, you know, I have no idea what I want to do. I'm not sure. Uh, but you know what? I think I like business. So we're just going to take business management. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, and also it was the easiest major too. So I thought, why not? So, <laughs> uh, I, And then I also did a minor in IMS. And IMS, take that with a grain of salt. That's like literally Microsoft Word. At cell. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then I graduated college and I ended up going over and living in Philadelphia. Uh, and I worked as a realtor at Redfin. So I went right into the real estate game. I was one of those things where I couldn't, I couldn't find a good internship to go into the quote unquote corporate world, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. uh, in like a cubicle. Um, so I just went and got a, my real estate license in PA. And then I worked in Philly as a realtor. Uh, I was just an associate agent, nothing crazy, literally driving around. If anyone knows Redfin out there, it's like with associate agent, I'm not doing any transactions. I'm literally just driving around doing showings, inspections, things like that. Very, very simple, low level stuff. Um, but when I was younger, when I was growing up, uh, my parents used to own a residential and commercial cleaning business. So I like to make the joke and not really funny joke. I'll tell you that I used to be in the cleaning industry since I've been in diapers. So literally, I remember when I was like 14, 15 years old, <clears throat> my parents would literally, uh, instead of me sitting at home, probably doing homework, which I probably should have been uh, in whether it's middle school, high school, I went out there and I was really like changing garbages, doing recycle with them or mopping the floors like at such a young age. And it just was like, you know what? It seemed normal at the time. It put food on the table for us. My parents did quite well. Um, and I directly got the idea from them. Um, they ended up editing out of that when I was 16, 17, but I directly got the idea from them when I was in Philly working as a realtor. I was like, you know what? I want to start my own business. I, uh, I don't really know what I want to do. I'm just going to call up my parents. It seems like the easiest route to go. So I ended up launching a house cleaning business and I was so new to entrepreneurship. I was like, you know what? I don't think I can even get an LLC. I'm Canadian. I don't know what to do. So I launched it in Canada while I was living in Philadelphia. So I was working. How old are you about this time? I was 21, 22. No, 22. I, All right. Yeah. So you're you're slinging real estate at a <laughs> yeah. low level. I have my license and that's, I call it yep. my pandemic hobby. So like, <laughs> you know, maybe eight, 10 transactions the past yep. two years. Um, so, so you're in Philly slinging real estate and yep. you're like, maybe this isn't, you know, the, the right fit for me. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. Sorry, sorry, to cut you off. It, it was one of those things where it was like, you know what? It, it's either it, it was kind of funny. I, it, it's funny how our brains work. We're very linear. It was very much yeah. like, you know what? It's either I do this forever for the rest of my life, or I go out there and do something else. And that was like how my brain was working at the time. Obviously, that's not reality in life. But um, and I thought to myself, I I've always wanted to make a lot of money. I've always wanted to be wealthy. Whether it's seeing my parents be able to. Um, whether they were struggling for money in when we were kids, whatever it may have been. Um, I've always known I wanted to like, I've always had this thought process. Money is such a dumb thing to have to worry about. So I'm going to go make a lot of it. So I don't have to worry about it. That was like my process yeah. or my thought process. 
So in saying that, um, yeah, I was slinging, I was slinging real estate, doing showings. I remember uh, a quick like side note was I remember driving down, if anyone knows uh, PA in Philly, I was driving down the turnpike and I remember like trying to pull over, like to like answer the phone calls for uh, bookings as well as like trying to book showings on showing time. Yeah, like it was, just, it, was so, it was so ridiculous. Like, it, and I was like testing and driving, driving with my knee. So um, it, it was just me being, I don't know. I was juggling a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah, I had no systems in place with my cleaning company. I literally grew it off of a notepad um, in, in the car on the turnpike and my personal email, post personal phone number. And the way my cleaning company was working was I literally was just connecting customers with cleaners. So yeah. I had no equipment. I had um, no employees, no vehicles, things like that. It wasn't at a physical location we had to check in on. It was literally just I was hiring contractors. I would Customers would call in. I would connect them with the customers and then I would get a margin percentage off of that. So, so you're in Philadelphia, start a cleaning business in Canada. Yeah. And you're yeah. connecting local Canadians to local cleaners while you're living in Philly. <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah. right? You're not, you're not like cleaning anything. You're not scrubbing toilets. No. Nope. You're, nope. you're a good middleman. If you yep. F fully remote. The, the best way I can uh, explain to someone is a quote unquote referral agency. That's the best yeah. way I can explain to someone. Um, it's kind of funny. I remember times I'd pick up the phone, uh, Red, Liam from Redfin, and it'd be like, oh, we're looking for a house cleaning. I'd be like, oh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's a house cleaning. <laughs> we but, do that too. <laughs> yeah, right. So um, it, it, it kind of cracks me up. But yeah, it, I was juggling a lot of things. And um, next thing you know, we went over that year and we did 120K gross revenue that first year at around a 33, 33, 40, 34% profit margin. Mm -hmm. So I had some decent cash. I mean, I, I literally just reinvested a lot back in the business. I just kept it in my bank account. I was living off my real estate salary, I guess, through Redfin. Um, and it was definitely something where it was um, just a little business that I had no idea what to do with. Next thing you knew, um, I, I moved back home. My work visa ended. So I moved back home with my parents. Um, and then... So what year is this? Oh, man. Uh <laughs> I grad, when did I graduate college? It was, might've been 2020. I don't, I don't know. I'll be honest. 20, yeah. 2020. Yeah. 2020, maybe 2020, yeah. 2019 around there. Yeah. Pre-pandemic. Yeah. Pre-pandemic. That's what people yeah. use the timeline yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it was pre-pandemic. Uh, so I, I moved back home and then, um, yeah, I, I literally went full blown into the business. I was like, you know what? I'm young. I don't have many bills. I have a, a little bit of student loans, not much. Um, I'm just going to go all in on this thing and see where it goes. And then we literally were growing on average 20, 25% month over month for revenue. And then I landed a couple of big contracts with commercial because we did a little bit of commercial. And then I landed some large type whale customers. And next thing you knew, we were hitting anywhere from 45 to 55K gross revenue per month, which is pretty cool. So um, it picked up. And then that's like, I skipped a lot of time there, but that was like, from when I moved home till hitting that, uh, it's been like two and a half, three years. So it's been a grind, man. It's it's been it's been definitely a um, roller coaster, as anyone knows in entrepreneurship. But um, yeah, that's sort of a high level of where I'm at now, I guess you could say. So yeah, no, I love that, and we'll dig into a little more, kind of you know how the business is is still structured. But um, you know, right now, I think you also uh, just to preface, and we'll dig into it at the end, but. You started a, a coaching business. Is that right? Yeah. So um, people always, it, I, I get this question a lot. And I'm like, I'm a very transparent guy. People are going to probably understand that from this, listening to this. Um, yeah. People are always like, oh, get, great. You're going to just go start coaching people. Uh, why don't you scale your uh, business up? And the, the way I look at it is um, cleaning is an amazing business to get started in. If you're someone that just as a new entrepreneur, do I think cleaning is going to get me to my multi-million dollar figure? I'm sure it could, but I don't think that's going to be the vehicle at which to get me there. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just like to say this because people always ask me like, why don't you just keep selling your company? So yes, I have gone into coaching. Uh, I have gone into helping people and going out there. And it's something where um, I'm literally helping people from the ground up start and scale house cleaning businesses while I'm also running my own, which is really cool. Um, looking to sell my own, but we can get into that later. But yeah. uh, I, I definitely am in the coaching space now, which is pretty cool. Um, we don't, I don't know how deep you want to go, but we, we have over 130 students in our program now, which is pretty cool. Wow. So, yeah. yeah but. That's awesome, man. I love the story here of 
you know, really trying to figure out what do you want to do next after school, kind of grinding, hustling yeah. and taking that mentality and applying it to your own business, um, which is really cool to see. And so, so Liam, you moved back to, to back to Vancouver. Is that right? Vancouver, uh, just inside. Right? It's uh, if anyone knows, maybe they do. It's a town called Kelowna. Okay. Yeah. Um, so move back to Kelowna and, uh, you're still running the business as kind of that intermediary, more of that referral business. You're yeah. not like taking on your own staff. That's really what you're growing uh, to 40, 55, you know, K of monthly revenue. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. It's so, so I guess diving into the format of my business and how it looks, um, we have just under 20 cleaners. We do anywhere. Majority of my customers are 75% and above are reoccurring customers. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of, I know maybe in the tech world, SaaS world, it's not technically reoccurring, but <laughs> it is in some form uh, reoccurring revenue that's coming in. So we have biweekly, mo- weekly, monthly customers, which is really cool. Um, and the lifetime value of these customers is very long. So anywhere from $4,000 to $5,000 typically for some people in this industry, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, so the way it's set up, I, myself, the owner, then we have two VAs. So virtual assistants over in the Philippines. One VA is managing a lot of the uh, scheduling uh, management for cleaners, as well as a lot of incoming customers. So that's what one VA is doing. Another VA is managing a lot of the uh, funnel build out for hiring, getting more cleaners on board. Because this is most likely, a well, not most likely, it is a double funnel as far as a sales pipeline. One right. being a customer, one being a cleaners. We constantly need to get cleaners on board, obviously need to get more customers. So it's a, it's a, double-sided marketplace that needs to be maintained which obviously pros and cons to having a double-sided marketplace but what i will say is is what that allows you to do is keep the margins quite high and the profit margins quite high expense is quite low for yourself which is really nice you don't have overhead for like equipment you don't have overhead for cars vehicles rent for an office space those types of things (coughs) excuse me which is really nice so i have the vas and then i have a operations manager which is going out there and checking on all the cleaning appointments So she's going out there driving around, checking on this, that, making sure things are running smoothly and making sure quality is maintained. Because people always ask, well, how do you keep quality? And that's sort of how we keep it. But before that, even we would have checklists and things that people would need to follow it as far as accordance with those. But um, that's a rabbit hole to get into. But that's sort of the format of of overview of how it looks. So Right. And so if I'm say I'm running a cleaning business myself and I'm doing all the cleaning, I need to go out and find customers. Um, I need to like maintain my own staff yep. um, and do all the legwork myself, but kind of how those referral business is set up, if you will. I don't know if that's the right term for it still it is. Yep. Um, is I need to go out, find customers and, and you're going to find them under your own brand. Right. Yep. So posting Craigslist, Facebook ads, Google ads on local, the best local cleaner in this area. 100%. Um, and bring them into your funnel there. Once you have a, a customer, now you need to connect them to a cleaner. You know, now need someone to go clean it because that's not your staff. You're going to sub that out uh, yep. to a local cleaner. Maybe it's an individual or, or someone who has a company um, and, and connect the two. But they're cleaning under your brand. Is that right? Well, that, that's exactly it. And what I will say, because some people do ask, is like um, this is this is a, a very normal model in this industry is what i'll say Mm. there uh, there's very few um unless you're a franchise or unless you're a very very big commercial cleaning company very few cleaning companies will go the route of going and investing hundreds of thousands of dollars towards getting cars equipment things like that because the margins are so razor thin in that type of Mm -hmm. space doing that um you you need to be looking at a 10-year 15-year 20-year horizon if you're going to do that, which is nothing wrong with it. I, I know people in my local market nationwide that have done that and have been very successful, built a lot of wealth. But in my personal opinion with this industry, when people want to get started, the easiest way to do it to get started, such low buried entry, 1000 1500 bucks, you can start growing a cleaning company right away and literally come in there with just yourself with some Wi-Fi and just have some good business owner type skills and delegation skills. Uh, and you can draw on some very quick cash flow uh, for this type of business. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Um, and so, Liam, I know you have some uh, some funny stories that I've seen online <laughs> about, you know, I'm sure you get the question, how do you manage your your contractors or your subs? Like, what's the craziest thing? What's kind of your go-to story there? <laughs> my, my go-to story is always uh, 
I'm sure if people follow me, they've probably heard this one before, but it's always the skinny dipping one. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's the one I, I want to hear. I, 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 I assumed you heard that you've heard this one. Um, so this was like two or three summers ago. No, I probably think it was two summers ago. And um, so two years ago. And I we we got a large customer in, in our local market. They were a property manager company. Um, and so quick tip, if you're starting a house cleaning company, um, email all the property managers in your area because I guarantee you'll get one and they will be a whale customer and I guarantee you'll get a ton of work from that. But anyways, um, so they were a large property management company and they we did on anywhere from 20 to 30 Airbnb turnovers per weekend. So wow. huge homes in this market that I'm in, they're large single family, like nice pool, lakefront. Um, these as short-term rentals would rent out literally anywhere from 30 to $40,000 for the full month, like nuts. So very, very high end. Um, but this house, of course, I sent two cleaners there. Um, I'm out and about doing my own thing, checking on other appointments. And next thing you know, I get a phone call from a customer uh, later on in the end of the day. And it was about cleaners um, going skinny dipping in the owner's pool. Um, I, I, don't, I don't, supposedly there's film, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the full story. I was like very, very apologetic on the phone to him. Um, and I felt horrible. And it was one of those things where it was, it was like such an awkward conversation. It was kind of like, I don't even know what to say right now on the phone. So I had, had to refund that one, unfortunately. So that was money on my pocket. But what are you going to do when you're managing labor? And I uh, had to let go of the cleaner, unfortunately. But anyways, the, the, we, we, um, we still clean for that customer, funny enough. Great. All right, <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> So we, we, we still clean for that customer. He still uses us, but um, we always make jo jokes every summer about skinny dipping. So, <laughs> so. That, that's too funny. And, and But outside of that, I mean, for the mm -hmm. most part, you do a really good job of uh, pre-screening your, your cleaners, oh, right? Yeah, 100%. 100%. I, and you know what I'll say is, is I've had people always ask like, oh, you're using contractors. Don't you have issues? I've had more issues with customers than I've had with cleaners. That rare story there, that's like a one in a four year story, I promise you. Yeah. Um, and if you ask any business owner, I'm sure they have one horror story out there that they can reflect on. But the reality is customers in this industry, I have come across way worse customers that I've had to deal with than cleaners. Cleaners are great. We do great pre-screening processes. They need to have some sort of professional experience in the industry already or a current business owner, whether they only have their own little staff Things like that, two years and above, background check taken, agreement signed, all those things, and you're pretty much golden. And the reality is, people, the majority of the people are very genuine out there. Uh, people aren't looking, people just want to make good money. They don't want to go into someone's house and start stealing and doing vandalism. Like, that's not going to happen. Um, maybe, knock on wood, but it's, uh, it's something where I've had a lot more issues with customers than cleaners, and people are kind of shocked when I do say that, so... Yeah, I think that's, you know, probably built through lessons learned and screening and making sure you're working with the right partners. And, you know, to your point, yeah, people are just trying to make an honest living, right? Yeah, <laughs> but they're not doing it for fun. They, they want to make a living out of it. Exactly. And the thing what I'll say is, like, I'm, I'm not here to uh, preach about how, pay, how much to pay people. But what I'll say is, is we pay people way more than what any other large cleaning company would pay. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, Cleaners get paid easily 15, 20% more working as a contractor than they would. And yes, sure, taxes for sure, they do pay those. But even that, cleaners that work for a large commercial cleaning company, they're their minimum wage at most. Um, and it, the cleaning's hard work. It's tough. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know if anyone out there is listening has gone and cleaned an oven in a move out clean and has been their head in the oven scrubbing it. But I'll tell you right now, you really start to evaluate life really quick when you start doing that. So um, it, it's hard work. So so cleaners are very motivated when you pay them well. And a low labor, a low labor, low level labor type of job like that is very, very motivated through capital. And if, if you're willing to pay well, which I think everyone should in this industry, uh, then, then you can motivate people very quickly. So, yeah, I love that. Um, so pivoting a little bit here. So you start the, the cleaning business, start making, you know getting traction in the market, growing that into a six figure kind of annual turnover kind of business here. Um, how I know you is from Twitter. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're my Twitter famous uh, interview here. 
17,000 <laughs> followers, something like that. Um, but can you talk about kind of the decision to double down on, on Twitter, building an audience and what that's done for you personally and kind of the business? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. So um, I, I, if I have any advice for anyone out there, and this is like genuinely from me, this is not from a, mon uh, a monetary incentive to push for this. From a networking, from a um, life documenting type of position, learning, uh, building knowledge, I, I, I recommend every single person start building in public. It doesn't matter if it's, and people always say to me, well, I don't know what to post. Well, I promise you, you have some sort of knowledge out there in your head that you've learned, you've come across that you can share, whether it's on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and someone will find it valuable. People undervalue their knowledge. And I think a lot of people need to start valuing their knowledge a lot more. So that's like my biggest thing I'll start off with. Um, Twitter, this is going to sound so dramatic to people. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Twitter changed my life. Uh, it, it's kind of crazy. Uh, if if I could share, uh, it, if someone was watching me like over the past seven months of my life, it, it's kind of insane. I started tweeting about a year ago and it took about four months to start really gaining traction. So it, it's been a grind, a long, a long year of definitely every single day, like 10 tweets a day. And I've sort of let off the gas now, but it, it's... um. It, it, it is a grind. And what I will say, if, if the quick tip, if anyone wants a quick tip on trying to, um, if you're looking for Twitter threads, start writing threads. And when I mean threads, like three times a week, share your stories, share business knowledge, or just go write threads about, I don't know, a book you read, something like that. Yeah. Or uh, um, another one too, if you want to go Instagram reels, just start posting a ton of reels, um, share your knowledge on there. But yeah, it, it's definitely changed my life. I've, um, I'm in Mexico right now in Tulum. Um, and I, I'm here with some of my best friends that I met from Twitter. So it's kind of crazy. Um, I, I know people are like, this guy just met up with Twitter people. That's nuts. But, <laughs> but, but the way I equate it to is like, if anyone's played video games before, you meet up with your video game friends. Maybe if, if, if someone out there yeah. listening has met up with a video game friend before, or just talk to a video game friend every single day. And that's sort of the way I equate it to. It's just through social media. Um, so it, it's definitely built a large network for me, um, more friends that have way more experience than me. It's provided me with mentors even, which is crazy and awesome. Um, and it, it also on a monetary side of it too, it's drawn in more business, whether it's to cleaning, my cleaning company, people somehow find me locally. I don't know how they do that, but anyways, <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I like that or not yet. And then, um, so they buy me locally. Um, and then another one also as well is um, through my building on my, coaching and as well as my e-learning business too on there over time that has helped as well. So uh, yeah, that's my long rant, but it, I would recommend every single person at least start documenting building someone in public. So, yeah, no, I love that. And I mean, that's something I, I on my last interview, I, I talked to a guy um, who runs a, a social kind of media agency, advertising agency, and talked a lot about kind of putting more content out there just to grow your personal brand. And that's something I'm personally mm -hmm. trying to accomplish, like with this podcast, whether, you know, posting this on YouTube, Instagram, yeah. uh, LinkedIn, I think is a big area. I'm seeing a lot of like exactly. creators um, post on like Mr. Beast now posts, posts on there and <laughs> yeah. like his manager and, you know, all the, all yeah. the YouTubers that I follow are, are now talking business over there. Um, yeah. So I think there's a lot of opportunity over there. Have you, have you looked at LinkedIn much? Uh, I, I'll be honest, I, I am so stretched thin on a lot of platforms right now that it's like uh, my main focus is Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Um, yeah. TikTok, people like to think it's just dancing. I promise you it's not. All right, have you done one though? Have you danced on it yet? I haven't danced yet. I, I, I should. It, hey, uh, listen, if it goes viral, I will dance. All right, yeah. <laughs> you heard it here. It's your cleaning TikTok dance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cleaning and dancing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's so I'm, I'm so spread thin on those. And I, I actually have a full time content uh, manager that helps me as well. But so obviously that I, I have a bit of an advantage over some people in that aspect. But what I would say to people is like just uh, grind it in the beginning. It, it's going to be a long term type of play. Um, but the best way to look at it is like you're building an asset, like a social media following is an asset. It doesn't matter if it's a monetary look at it. It doesn't matter if it's a network look at it. That is an asset that. Literally, if you think about it, and people may, um, I know, Nick, you were saying you have some SaaS 
followers in here and people that are in yeah. tech, it, say you're a SaaS founder and you want to go raise VC, but hey, you don't, you have, you have no connections. You have no idea who you're looking for, or maybe you just, you don't want to raise VC. You just want to go raise a fund in real estate, maybe, or you're a real estate fund manager or something. I don't know. I'm just throwing examples out there. You, and you have a social following. You can raise millions millions of dollars and there's there's tons of prime examples out there of people that are in different niches of twitter that have done that so um just by showing your expertise on social media showing and sharing your story people start building trust they start following you and some people use it in evil ways but if you use it in a good way of course which everyone should um it can provide a lot of leverage and it can be a very valuable asset and so when building out kind of uh your your twitter following so you mentioned dropping threads Mm -hmm. posting 10 times a day. I've also read that you should like respond to people, respond to other posts. What are some other like hacks that you, you use to kind of build that following? 100%. So I am um, maybe too transparent on Twitter. I'll be honest. Okay. Uh, people may go to my Twitter and whether it's my hot takes uh, <laughs> or it's my, um, it's just sharing what I'm investing in, revenue numbers, things like that. I'm not saying you don't have to go and do that. That's you don't if you don't want to, you definitely don't. Um, it's definitely helped a little bit for me as far as building a following. People obviously like numbers and they like they gravitate towards people that earn higher income. I totally get it. Um, some tips I would say replies are big. I kind of I'm slacking on the replies, um, but I would just be open and transparent and willing to share more than maybe you're comfortable with. I would say, I mean don't don't go put your social on there, but. I like, like uh, f f feel free to uh, open up. Maybe, I don't know, you, you had a great month of revenue in your business or you're going out there and you're quitting your job to start a company of some sort, maybe a cleaning business. Maybe you would share uh, a little bit more about, I don't know, your nervousness about it. Uh, you're going to be start sharing your journey every day, adding a new tweet to the thread every day that you just started, giving your story a bit of a rundown um, and reaching out and DMing bigger accounts. So send them a message. They may not reply to you right away. I will be honest. I, I used to this meeting and I never got any replies, but some will reply. You'll get an answer to them and you'll start building a network, building connections. And I think it was a stat, like there's something, I forget exactly on Twitter, but it's like 5% of the users do over 90% of the tweets or something like that. Yeah, like, it, yeah. like it's like, it's, it's something crazy. Like a, a very low, low percentage of people do, over 90% of the tweeting. So you'd be shot. Like I go through on my Twitter feed and it's just like, it's like, I, I I'm used to seeing the regular people. I'm like, Oh yeah. That guy, yeah. 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 So, but anyways, yeah, yeah no, that's great. Um, yeah. I, I was also seeing, you know, as Elon's doing this whole plan to take over, he tweeted more in like the month of January than, you know, the founder, CEO, everyone who <laughs> like previous <laughs> CEOs had ever tweeted in their entirety. <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's uh, who knows if that goes through. We'll see. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> it'll yeah. be fun. It's fun to watch. Exactly. Uh, it's going to be a spectator. So. Exactly. Uh, cool, man. So as part of like building that following, you also then launch your your cleaning to zero, your coaching business. You put mm -hmm. out content. That's I actually um, bought one of your courses. So this was probably september so we had our uh our Dang, baby okay. in like beginning of september yeah so i'm up at like 2 a.m feeding the baby you know doing all that stuff yep. as a new dad i'm like i need something to watch so i bought your course and i, I went through it i don't know if i remembered much because i was okay. pretty sleep deprived but that, that's one of the things I, I walked through and and watched as part of that um so i'd love yep. to you to share kind of your process of like wanting to put out that kind of content, like how you're helping folks in that space and you know, talk about cleaning to zero some more. Yes. Yeah, so so I'm, I'm very transparent. I'll be open about everything. It's, so we have over 130 people and like cleaning from zero right now is my like main focus. Um, yeah. I'm actually looking to exit out of my cleaning business and, and sell that very soon. Just got some taxes left. Got to get rid of those taxes. Jeez. But <laughs> so, got to pay those taxes off. And then uh, I'll, I'll most likely be exiting out of my cleaning business. And then, um, yeah, my main focus is cleaning from zero. We have over 130 people. Uh, we have a awesome success rate. And it's something where this program, um, it, it's kind of crazy, man. Like you, you, you start getting testimonials in, you start seeing people and the results. And um, it's a sense of accountability towards the business and, and helping people. 
and it's obviously very stressful like over 130 people definitely like there's some nights that i stay up and it keeps me up mm -hmm. um and obviously we have a we have a decent sized team it's myself we have a sales director we're getting two more sales reps we have a customer's full-time csm we have two and is a lot of that coming from twitter kind of like traffic or how are people finding you uh i would say over 70 percent from twitter yeah wow. Yeah. So building a whole new business based on that following, based on that audience kind of yeah, it's, really it's, talking it's, about the value of it. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Like that's, and that's why like, this will sound nuts. And it, I, it's, it sounds nuts to people that maybe haven't, but when you, when people do build a following, uh, cause they will, cause hopefully they do when they live after listening to this, um, Twitter is one of my most valuable assets. It literally is like it, it, Twitter is valued higher than any of my businesses in my personal opinion at this point. Because it, I, I know I could go on there and I could connect with someone and say, hey, man, I'm homeless and broke and mm -hmm. I need some help. Could you maybe provide me some assistance and maybe get me a job? And yeah. I know I could probably find a good job. Or yeah. I know I could get a, I don't know, jump on it as a co-founder with someone else that's looking to start a business out there and do something. So yeah. like that's, I was like a worst case scenario. And I'm like, Twitter always, Twitter's always got my back, worst case scenario. But, right. but I think I, what's interesting too there, Liam, is not to belittle the number, but you don't have a million followers. I know, right? <laughs> it's it's not like, you know, you're Ashton Kutcher on the platform. Yep. You have a, a large following. I mean, 17,000 individuals, you know, it's mm -hmm. a, a few high schools worth following. But, <laughs> you know, uh, but, still, you know, still that 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 numbers can be very significant. Uh, oh, for sure. And I think the biggest thing is people just um, maybe I'm just kind of I'm in a very interesting niche, too. I've also mm -hmm. thought of that, like cleaning. Not everyone does that. So it's kind of unique. So I, I sort of get that aspect of it. But also, like, yeah, people you don't know when, when so, someone you can grow a business off of a, a very small audience. You can you can start um, really helping yourself in life uh, just by building a following. And yes, yeah, so over 70 percent of the people have come through. Um, Twitter, we have some through Instagram now. I'm starting to build a little bit of following on Instagram. We're almost at 2K on Instagram, which is cool. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's been a steady pace, and we we have over in the program. We're we're just about to 30 testimonials, which is pretty crazy. Um, and of course, there's a lot more success stories. Not everyone wants to give a testimony. I'm sure if any other business owners out there know, it's it's a it's it's a it's a tough grind to get testimonials. <laughs> um, but but it. Yeah, it's it's very cool helping people and see them scale and start businesses and uh, change their lives. I mean, we, we've we've had people that have been full time engineers and they've quit their engineering job to go and run their cleaning business that does twenty k a month at like thirty percent profit margins. We've had people that were uh, Airbnb owners that started the side business and then next thing you know is grew it up and now it's a huge beast of its own. Or um, people that were a nurse and they also were working as a restaurant at the same time, they were able to quit both their jobs so they could, um, run a cleaning company. So it's pretty cool. Like it, it definitely is changing lives. And, and, um, I, I, I don't take credit for all of that. These people have worked very, very hard. I'm not, I'm, I'm literally just giving them the answers to the test. And it, if they put in the time and effort, which a lot of them have, then, um, they, they take a hundred percent accountability, um, success for that. It, it's all them. I, I won't, I won't sit here and say I've done all the help they, they, they are the ones working hard every day. So yeah. yeah. But who, who are maybe, um, what are the traits of the folks that are being success, successful and kind of launching their own business here? Yeah. So this is kind of crazy. And this is kind of like an, maybe an obvious thing. Some people may think in their head. Um, but only, the only people that have not been able to succeed we have found, um, is the ones that have trouble getting the business started. So if you follow me on Twitter, you probably know, I always say done's better than perfect. And if you're in the program listening to this, I'm sure you're like, Liam, this is all Liam says is done's better than perfect. Um, Cause that's all, that's all I talk about. And the reason I say that a lot of the time is because I think a lot of the, pe a lot of people out there get caught up in the very minor things when it comes to whatever it may be with business and whether it's the logo needs to be perfect. The, oh gosh, well the, the cleaner's route to the contract isn't, isn't perfect and optimized. Well, who cares? Just send the cleaner. The job will get done. It's okay. Like, 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 um, things like that, I think hold people back a lot. And that's where we've seen some maybe potential failures if they come up, um, is people just don't get that through that first couple of weeks to get the business launched. And then literally after that, I'm not even joking. It's just rinse and repeat, get more customers, get more cleaners, get more customers, get more cleaners, put out a fire. If there's any fires, Get more customers, get more cleaners. So that, that's that's literally the process. Um, 
and yeah, so that long-winded answer to your question, but that's typically what we see. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense that zero to one is the hardest part for most people and, and really anything in life, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, and so we're, we're trying to do a better job at obviously being accountable uh, and like helping people and reminders and things like that with our team here at Cleaning From Zero. But I'm also, uh, when people join this program, we do a like quite a big vetting, not a big vetting process, but we do ask them and say to them like, hey, like we don't want to pull your teeth to join. Like, yeah. Like we we're coming at this from a very abundance mindset for people that want to join our program. It's, it's very much so like, I don't want to force you. Like if you don't want to join, you don't want to start a cleaning company. I don't want to force you just so you, just so I have one more person on my program. Like you need to want to do this. Like I'm not, I'm not going to be here to make you want to do it. So that's sort of the approach we've taken. And that's really skyrocket, skyrocketed um, success rates, which is really cool because people come in and they actually want to do it and they put in the time and, they, they follow the done is better than perfect type strategy for the first couple of weeks. So, yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, I, I think let's start to wrap up here. I mean, I have a yeah. million more questions, but maybe we'll save it for a part two. Definitely. Um, would, would love to know, you know, what's the plan for you the next year, two years? We don't have to go too far out, right? Even six months. <laughs> uh, where, where are you trying to take this business? Um, what are some of the goals that you're working towards? And, yeah, how can the audience help here? Yeah, I, I appreciate it for sure. So I would say over the next, uh, one thing I will say is I've, I've been trying to get a better job at increasing my time horizons for goals. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like, it because I'm the type of guy that will like be up all night, like we're not going to hit a revenue target this month or we're not going to, we're not going to have enough cleaners for that month, blah, 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 blah. And it'll just over, my anxiety will just go to the roof. So yeah. I've been trying to increase my uh, my goal of time horizon. So over the next year, what I would say is I really want to sell my cleaning business. That's a big one. Once I get that out. Um, we're just gonna you on Biz by Sell about to post it? Uh, yeah, pretty close maybe. I, I I don't have the link yet. If I, I, yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it, it definitely got to get a value, things like that. We'll see. I'm not going to be a millionaire off of it. I'll be transparent about that. Like, I'm not going to, it'll be a six figure at it. It won't be crazy. Um, yeah. And, but I'll be happy. And um, yeah, and then my, my hundred percent focus is cleaning from zero and growing it. We want to help a thousand people over the next year, start and scale a successful house cleaning business. So a thousand people, which I think is going to be really, really cool. I think it's, possible we're at 130 uh we've been doing this for seven months now i know that's like that math doesn't add up there liam but it's uh i i think we can do it i think we can it, it'll snowball it, it'll snowball for sure and like uh it the the program will keep growing and social will keep growing so we'll see so that's gonna be my main, my main focus and uh just trying to keep growing this maybe travel a little bit i'm not like the big like travel guy i'm gonna be honest but i uh i'm very much a routine type guy so mm -hmm. I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone here in Mexico, but it's, uh, yeah. So that's my, that's my goal. As far as the audience helped me, um, I really can't ask for much. I mean, go check out my social profiles. Uh, all of them are my name at Liam Kircher on Twitter or at Liam dot Kircher on Instagram, Instagram, please. I, I, I would love more followers on there. If you could yeah, I'll put all the um, links below <laughs> and TikTok as well. Uh, we're going to start getting some more professionally done content on there, which is cool, but yeah, go check those out. And if you are someone out there that more, is interested in learning more about starting a cleaning business, uh, literally, there's no commitment. You can jump on a phone call with us, chat with us a little bit more in depth, um, or just go. If you someone that if you're someone that just wants to do it themselves, don't need any help, go through all my content, digest that, and then if you want help in the future, you're more than happy. You're more, I'd be more than happy to help you if you want to reach out. So, but that's all I got. Yeah, no, I love it, man. This was a lot of fun. Uh, really glad we got to meet and, and talk um, and learn more about your story. Uh, now you're more than just uh, a Twitter follow. So I appreciate it. <laughs> no, I, I love these podcasts because you do, you do make friends, you build connections and it's good networking. So uh, I'm happy to, I'm happy I could join Nick and uh, hopefully we do, we, we do do a part two. That'd be awesome. So. Yeah. Love it. Well, for anyone who's stuck it out this long, I appreciate you watching all of Liam's uh, social links. They'll, they'll be down below here. Uh, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, trying to build my own audience so uh, I can go be part of Liam's cleaning business here. Uh, <laughs> but with that, uh, again, thanks, everyone. And we'll see you at the next podcast. Thanks so much.